pictures look wrong. Is that it? I don't know. Let's ask this guy. Let's just shout at him real quick. Dude, do it. Excuse me. <laughs> Is your house 3D printed? 3D printed. The Are they on this street? Okay, thank you. The hardest part about this whole thing is the fact that we're in like a very creepy van. It's not that creepy, it has windows. You're right, you're right. And it's painted. Okay, so if if they are here, it wasn't as immediately obvious. The architectural uh, genius though behind it. Are you trying to trigger me? <laughs> All right, good morning. We're on our way bright and early over to Ascentium. Their facility is really just a production facility for additive materials such as filaments. And um, they also do uh, quality assurance over there, uh, checking on the material strength of said materials that they produce and they do quality assurance on the machines. Even though the machines that they make aren't made at this facility, they run the gamut at this facility before they're shipped to their consumers. I'm really excited to meet with them and see all of the research and development they're doing. So let's go, Josh, pedal to the metal, quick, quick, like bunny. Good man. What's going on, guys? Hey, good morning. It's Steve. Brandon. Hey, Brandon. Garrett. Hey, Garrett. Nice to meet you. Yeah, show me around. Let's see what your guys are all about. Wow, man. Yeah? So where do we start? You guys right. have a huge facility. <laughs> yeah, it is quite large. Is this all material here? Yes. That's where we're going to start. <laughs> we're going to start with the material. Awesome. Naturally. From, from our world, it starts with the materials. Mm -hmm. You got to build materials up. first company. And we really look at things starting with good in, good out. But this is our wall of material. <laughs> and this wall represents all of the raw ingredients that we mix together, blend, extrude into high performance filaments. Uh, so we actually extrude twice. We extrude first from pellets into filament. The filament creates the feedstock that is then fed into the printer and then okay. is extruded into parts. As we move on, our team will grab bags or lots of resin and then they end up into these pieces of equipment right here. Okay. So one of the key things that you deal with when you're working with thermoplastic materials mm -hmm. is moisture. As a part of any process that we do to start with, it's always going into these dryers. Uh, wow. These are okay. high performance desiccant dryers that basically suck all the moisture out of the pellets, make sure that's bone dry so that when we start with our extrusion process, you're starting with high quality material that's been processed and dried appropriately for that's manufacturing. Awesome. So as you come down here, this is our extrusion setup. This is our twin screw extruder. Uh, today we're manufacturing an aerospace material called PEC, poly oh, cool. ether yeah. ketone ketone. And uh, we're working with a twin screw extruder. So we feed pellets in, there's two screws that rotate and convey the material as it's mel uh, melted and then extruded into a filament here. Right. Um, we've got a melt pump set up too that's helping us to maintain a very stable pressure of the material as it's coming out of the die. Is there any risk of it getting moisture right there? So in this process, once the material is dried, that's uh -huh. the most important part is starting out with dry pellets. Starting with dry. Because as you heat the material up, that's where problems can exist. Because gotcha. uh, the material could foam up because it's literally converting that absorbed moisture wow. into steam. Once the material is extruded, we actually pull it into a, a really thin section of water in order to rapidly quench the material and okay. kind of solidify it. So right oh, here is wow. the magic of measurement. Measurement yeah. is all about making sure that what's going on at the start of the line is actually consistently coming out in the extruded filament product. So uh, right here you see a combination of tri-axis laser gauges 
Uh, so this is basically a non-contact measurement system that's yeah. from three axes. It's shooting a laser this way, this way, and this way. And we're grabbing all three axes and measuring them simultaneously to make sure that we can understand the full diameter and ovality tolerances of the material. So cool. as we switch over to the next spool, this is an automatic changeover and transfer station. And then this piece of equipment here makes sure that we have the right tension. It's an ultrasonic dancer, we wow. call it. And it makes sure that basically the right tension and slack is being pulled up on the filament so that it was, we do that changeover process that the right tension and uh, the tautness of the line is being maintained as we yeah. switch from one spool to the next. All right. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. So oh, wow. whereas that was very much the, the machine, material, material side. side, this is very much the machine side. This is our single head machine. Okay. So inside, when, when you look in, you'll see one nozzle kind of off to the left. Oh yeah, there um, it is. That is our base model machine. Yep. And all the material comes from down there? Yep, so the material just slides into these canisters here. Um, okay. That, that open up. Very neat. So they just sit inside, and then they get closed, sealed, and then put inside the machine. The heads, are when they move around, are they on like like conventional CNC machine ways, or are they belt driven like a, a desktop printer? It's just on a, it's a traditional gantry system. I can open okay. it up and show you on the inside. Oh wow, look at that. Um, this well, is it, really impressive. And it opens up a lot of usefulness for us, right? Yeah. And for our customers especially, right? Everything's so clean and polished in there too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So everything we want to do is, everything that we do, we want to make sure that not just the materials are useful to our customers, but our machine is. Mm -hmm. So having a large build volume allows us to tackle large tools, injection mold tools, compressive mold tools, yeah. big check or go no-go fixtures. We're able to tackle them in here. So now this room is for like a little bit of research and development and also the machine manufacturing. Like yes. see some boxed up machines down there ready to go out. Right, so that, that, that's all part of our, our quality system. So we bring okay. the machines in, and oh, then we gotcha. actually uncrate them, and we will run our own quality tests on so them So the here. machines are assembled elsewhere. Yes. And it's, you guys are doing the QA. Yes, we bring it in gotcha. just to make sure that it's, it meets all of our standards before shipping it out to customers. Gotcha. Yeah. Material, machine, and now we're at the final part. Right. This is kind of the end game for everybody in additive right now, is finding useful parts that can benefit their processes and their manufacturing system. Yeah. Um, so this is kind of our bread and butter. You know, the machine from the ground up has been built to address high speed or high volume manufacturing. Mm -hmm. um, so whether we do that through manufacturing aids like jigs and fixtures, which you can see a couple here, right? Okay. Um, placement fixtures where you take your assembly and part by part you put it together yes. and begin to assemble the final part. Yeah. Whether it's an assembly jig or fixture, um, which we've got quite a few of here. Okay. Um, this one actually is built for our uh, filament line. So oh, wow. these, these, if you looked closely back at the back at the, on the line, you can see these sandwiching the spools together. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we've actually 3D printed this. We have a couple designs because we have many different spool types that we have, just depending on the material and the size. Right. So these help us prototype the size that we need to do or the angle that we may need to have it go on the line at. But when it comes to jigs and fixtures, there's so many different colors and, and shapes and requirements, right? Yeah. So you could have you know, something that just aligns your, your spool on your filament system, mm -hmm. or you could have something that needs to be very, like handle very delicate equipment when you're doing PCB work. Gotcha. So something like this, where it's a little PCB holder, it's made of anti-stat material, so it's yeah. electrostatically safe, right? You can gently put like a, a PCB on here and do any work that you may need to, right. and know that the material is going to cover you from the safety side and from the ESD side. Well, that was awesome and a real treat. What a cool facility. We got to see the entire supply chain and workflow of what they do here at Sentium. We got to see everything start from the material pellets all the way to them extruding the actual material spools. And we got to see some of their testing, their final testing of the material stuff. That was a real treat. I gotta give a big shout out and thanks to these guys at uh, Ascentium, these ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it was a real pleasure and uh, can't wait to see the next place in Texas.